All right, we're going to make a change now in our work. We're now dealing with the question of rotation problems. All through the semester, we had really worked mostly with translational problems, that is, things that didn't rotate, things that were considered to be a point and flew through the air or rolled across or, or slid across the ground, and so forth. Now we want to consider things that roll. Now we'll start by not considering a full disk yet or something like a wheel, but just considering one particle and talking about how we would want to define its position. And this gets us back to some work we'd done previously in the semester. You have a ball right here and it has some x and y coordinates. Maybe that happens to be two meters and one meter. And over time it moves along this circle to a new position and now it has new coordinates. Maybe this is minus one meter, two meters. Both the x and the y change as the particle goes around the circle. So even for this one particle, I would need to have two sets of equations, one that defines the y, one that defines the x. So it's a two-dimensional problem. And that's because I use Cartesian coordinates. But how do I use polar coordinates, where I described in terms of a radius and an angle? then as this particle moved around the circle to over here, the radius doesn't change. Only the angle changes. So I only need to have one equation, and it's a one-dimensional problem, greatly simplifying my work. So it makes sense that we want to talk about the location of a particle by describing how the angle changes and where the angle is. For instance, this angle is more than pi over 2. It's over here at some greater value, but it's less than pi. Maybe that happens to be 2 pi over 3 radians. Whereas over here, maybe this happened to be something else. Of course, this isn't the actual value because I'm not trying to match these things up with this angle. Um, but this is some other value, okay? So, Maybe that was pi over 4. It won't be pi over 4. These would have to be equal, so it would have to be something else. So the idea is to just describe these by an angle rather than describe them by x and y. Now, it does matter what the radius is because I may want to know how far it travels. And particles can go the same angle but be on different circles. For instance, you could have a particle here, and it's going around this circle. And it went through the same angle change, but it didn't go the same distance because it's on a smaller, if I could draw well anyway, circle. So the radius is important, but every point along that circle has the same radius, whatever that radius is. Now with a, a solid wheel, let's say, where this thing is kind of filled in, in other words, if you have an object like this, then you're going to have many particles and some particles are going to be going around in a circle like this and some particles are going to be going in a different circle like that but if it's rigid all the particles potentially will go going around the same angle change in the same amount of time and so it makes sense to talk about the angle as being the way to measure the position of a rotating object. So we're going to talk about angular position. Now, to do angular position, we're going to at some point want to connect it back to these arc lengths. So let's look at what we need to know. First, you need a symbol, just like we had the symbol x. Well, we're going to use the symbol to be theta. You're going to find with all our angle position or angle variables, we're going to generally give them Greek letters. And we're going to try to make them Greek letters as close as they are possible to the letters that we would have used in the English language. So for instance, acceleration starts with A. We're going to use a Greek letter that's equivalent of A in order to describe it. The distance that an object travels is what we used to study and we're still going to want to study it so for instance maybe these two guys are right here and they start at this angle of zero and 
they rotate around here to some new position. So sometime later they're here and this ball is over here. They will not cover however the same distance. This one will cover this much distance and the one running on the outside will have to run much faster because they'll have to cover more distance. Now they won't cover any different angle. The angle is here or more precisely the displacement or change in angle is there. So we would like to be able to relate this distance. This distance has a name and a symbol. Its symbol is S and it's called the arc length, at least in most books. Gene Colley likes the, to put this as L. That's kind of very unusual, but he does it to imply its length. The arc length is related to this angle by the formula R theta where R is the radius of the particular circle you're running on. So here it'd be the short R for the blue guy and it'd be a bigger R for the people on the red circle. The angle theta can be measured in many things but when you use this formula it has to be in something very special. It has to be what's called the radian. It cannot be in degrees. Why is that? Well, let's just watch and let the guy go all the way around. If he goes all the way around, he would cover a distance like this. The whole outside of the circle. That's known as the circumference. And the circumference, you should have learned in geometry class, has the formula that the length is 2 pi r. If you put in theta here as degrees, the amount of degrees in a circle is 360 r. Well, that's wrong. The circle is not 300, the circumference is not 360 times the radius. It's about a little more than six times the radius. It's 2 pi. This 2 pi is what is called the radian. And in fact, it's the definition of the radian. The radian is defined as the arc length divided by the radius. In other words, it's from that formula. So, the unit for measuring angles is the radian, usually shortened to just be rad in physics. It is a unitless quantity. How do I know that? Because I can solve this formula for the units. The units of theta would be the units of the arc length divided by the units of the radius. But arc length is a length. It's measured in meters. The radius is a unit of length that's in meters. And that meters cancels that and there's no units. So why even write it? Why don't we just say, hey, it's, it's pi over 2. We're wanting to emphasize which land we're at. Are we in angular variables or we are in linear variables? You can think of them like two different countries, like Mexico and the United States. You may want to go into Mexico to do something. You may want to go into angular land to do something to make some computation because it's easier. But then you may need to come back because somebody wants to know, like this person, how far the red person ran, which is the length along the circumference. So you have to cross the border. And when you do it, you have to know which land you're in. Now, R plays a significant part in crossing the border from one to the other. In fact, this is an essential part of how you convert from angular land at theta to linear land at S, or to divide s by r to go back to linear land. But it's also important to know which land you're in. We put the radian in things because it reminds us we're in angular land. When we're not in angular land, we throw the radian away. It doesn't show up in our unit measurements. I'll show you that in an example in a minute. It is important to know that angles can be given in other things like degrees, they can be given in revolutions, etc. But no matter how they're done, they must be converted to radians if you're going to go to the non-angular part of the problem. That is, if you're going to go from angular land back to non-angular land, then the angle has to be written in radians when you make that conversion, just like I showed you for the circumference. Now, it's useful to know some conversions. All of them come from the circle. If you go all the way around a circle, there are many ways to measure that angle change. 
you could say you went 360 degrees. You can say that you went one radian. I'm sorry, not one radian, one revolution. Or you can say that you went two pi radians. So two pi radians is one revolution. Two pi radians is 360 degrees. And this forms the basis of making conversions. Let me show you one. You got a runner covering an angular displacement of 200 degrees while running on a circular track of 150 meters. How far did he run? Well, we need S. S is equal to R theta. But theta has to be in radians. 150 meters. 200 degrees, but I can't leave it in degrees. So 2 pi rad over 360 degrees. Degrees cancel. And you might think you're going to be in meter rads, but remember, when you're out of angular lands, the radians are unitless. They just go away. So we multiply that together. 150 times 200 divided by 360 times 2 and you get 100 approximately 167 pi which is approximately 525 meters so 150 6 pi meters, which is 525 meters. Angular position is not a vector. And the reason for that is it doesn't actually obey the laws of vectors. Now, we don't usually care about this in AP class too much because we will lock the object so it has to rotate around a fixed axle. But it is in your book, and I thought we should show it. If you take a book, something that's kind of an oblong object, and you rotate it about an axis, like putting a shaft here and spinning it, the book will turn on its side. So that's theta 1. If you then rotate about a different axis, say an axis where you put the shaft in this, and spin it by an angle theta 2, then you end up with this nice kind of edge of your book. You can do this in the class. If you re undo these, let's say you do the same thing, but in opposite. First, you take your axis that's in the shaded side and you rotate it. Then the book looks different after theta 2. And then you rotate by theta 1. You end up with a book that looks like this. Play with it yourself. The book doesn't look the same. It doesn't look the same. It means that you can't flip the order. A vector has a quantity that's not just a magnitude and direction, but it also has to obey the fact that you can add vectors in other directions. These angles do not obey that. Now, we can treat them like vectors if we make them always stay about one axis, like right here. And all the angles only go about this direction. We can also make it like a vector if you don't make those angle changes so big. So if you only let it be a very small change, an infinitesimal change, delta theta, then they behave like a vector. Do this with a book. Don't make the change too much and see that the two pictures of the book look almost the same. All right, that finishes angular position, and we'll talk about angular velocity in the next video.